the Browns do have a preseason game coming up on Saturday. However, it looks like a lot of people won't be playing. The real preseason game in a matchup is going on this week at practice with a joint practice with the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll drill down on some of those matchups and position groups that we look to uh, really get going. And we'll talk about what some of the key things that we want to see coming out of these joint practices coming up on the next Locked On Browns podcast. You are Locked On Browns. Your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB on the LOB, the Lockdown Browns podcast, brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Your host, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. Your host from the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, 92.3 The Fans, barbershop host, Garrett Bush at G Bush. 91. Make sure you're following. Check out the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Subscribe. Notifications on. Get all your information over there as the show just continues to crank out a ridiculous lineup of guests day in, day out. Um, Friday's episode might be something you all want to check out. That's going to be a good one over there as well. Uh, appreciate everybody makes Lockdown Browns their first lesson every single day, whether it is on your favorite podcast platform or, of course, available now on YouTube. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to the show. The numbers continue to grow now as we're in full-fledged football season. We appreciate you all for that. Notifications on. So whatever Garrett and I drop over there, you guys will have it in your ears or in your eyes uh, as quickly as possible. As Garrett mentioned in the, in the open, um, the Browns, yeah, yes, Sunday, the Browns and the Eagles are going to play a football game. But it seems like the Cleveland Browns are taking Thursday and Friday as you know, basically the, the meat of this meal. Uh, you know, it's, uh, they're saying that maybe most of the starters probably won't play on Sunday, opting to get the work in here. Um, this is big, uh, the way these joint practices you know go down. And we touched on it a little bit the other day. But A, number one, as a player, you're sick of beating up on your teammates. You're just done with it. Um, so you get the opportunity, you know, get some fresh blood in here. Uh, go one-on-one. -on -one. The other thing is, is, I mean, you've mirrored, you know, teammates for so long now, you know, you're to the point maybe where you're stale as far as, you know, you know what your teammates got. I mean, you knew it already because, you know, you share a locker room, you know, the best thing about you know, your teammates as far as on the field, you know what their weaknesses are, but now it's straight up, you know, are you taking the coaching? Are you taking the technique we are teaching you? Um, if you do make a mistake, especially if you're a young player, when the coach says, this is what you did wrong, when you go out there and you take that next rep, are you not going to do that again? So you got, get to see a lot of that. We're going to go here. We'll start, you know, just you know, some things we're looking for on the offensive side of the ball here. This is basically be a Jacoby Brissett led team here for these two practices. You know, as Coach Stefanski said, Jacoby Brissett, for all intents and purposes, is now the number one quarterback for this team. We'll hear, um, you know, the rumors are we should hear, you know, Deshaun Watson, the verdict sometime, you know. I'm not falling for this. Uh, the hearing ended 49 days ago, so I'm not falling for this anymore. That is good. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It's one of those things where, you know, I'm not going to believe it until, you know, I see something official. Um, but for now, Jacoby Reset is number one qu uh, quarterback for this team. Uh, we're going to need to see what he can do. Uh, the Eagles, uh, you know, Eagles are a pretty good football team, playoff team last year. Um one of the key matchups for me here is now that we talk about Ethan Procise being the number one center for the Browns. And look, in 57 career games in the NFL, Ethan Procise has started 40. It's not like he's just somebody off the street. He was going to make this team regardless of Nick Harris's injury or not. Uh, the Eagles first round selection, defensive tackle Jordan Davis. Uh, he just, I mean, we talk about freaks in the world, but Jordan Davis is like one of the you know, top percentile absolute athletic freaks at his size men that size are not supposed to move like he does they're not supposed to be as strong as he does he's had a strong camp for the eagles and for ethan Procise, this is going to be a big thing for him because he needs to go in and have a good couple of days because look the jc trader rumors are out there um and the question is going to be can ethan Procise maybe squash him a little bit you know jc is 31 we know he's you know obviously you know, got a bad knee the body as a whole ain't so great but you know what you get from e, uh, from J.C. Treader. So for Ethan Procise, this is going to be a big couple of days here against Jordan Davis. Um, uh, Garrett touched on it a little bit the other day. 
the Eagles defensive front, which is considered a wide nine, which basically means you're taking your defensive ends and you're saying, well, we're outside of everybody. So basically, you know, if the defensive end, your inside eye is on the outside, inside shoulders on the outside shoulder. I'm sorry, I was taught, I was always taught eye, um, but now it's inside shoulders on the outside shoulder of the furthest man from the line of scrimmage, wide receiver notwithstanding. And basically what it is, is you're not getting outside of us. Um, so this defensive scheme that the Eagles run, this is something that, you know, doesn't necessarily suit the way the wide zone that the Browns run. Um, and the emphasis here for the Browns running backs in these next couple of days, and probably even Jerome Ford, because this is going to be something new. You got off to a great start, and now it's going to be totally different facing this Eagles in the wide nine. You're going to have to be smart, and key word here is going to be patience. And you heard stuff Mitchell used the other day in regards to Kareem Hunt. Uh, when you're facing a wide nine front and the wide zone that the Browns love to you know love to do, it's got to be patience because you absolutely have to be looking for the cutback lanes. So these are some things on the offensive side of the ball, you know, that I am looking forward to you know to see here in these next two days. And I know Garrett's got some thoughts here as well. Yeah, I, I think when you look at Jordan Davis, I think that's one of the big bigger uh, matchups. Now, to be clear, um, Jordan Davis is I mean he's 350, 60 pounds. Uh, six foot seven, six six foot seven. Uh, one of the, I mean, I just saw some practice film of when he's just bull rushing somebody straight into the back. No, no pass rush needed. No, none of that. Just straight bull rush to the to the to the bag and and pass rushing, just dominating the center. And the thing about you know Jordan Davis is he's not slow. I think he ran like a four nine or something. Like how you gonna be how even you, faster than that? What what do you run like a four eight? I think it was like I think it four seven nine. I mean, you know, his athletic his athletic profile was literally like a ten point oh off the actual charts. I got to give him the ugly face on that one. Oh my goodness, this guy he's gonna be. And, and you know, the great part about this is you're gonna get to see um, Ethan Procise getting get a chance to play and go against that guy this week. So you'll know, you know, where he looks like he is the best of the best because you're not gonna see a bigger stronger, faster nose tackle in the game. Um, Aaron Donald, even if you see him, he's Aaron Donald is a small D tackle. You know, I don't even think he's 300 pounds, but, you know, he, you know, Aaron Donald is just different. But you're not, it's going to be hard-pressed to find a, another matchup that you're going to be able to challenge yourself against and, 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 you know, give yourself a measuring rod, so to speak, on how you stack up against really great competition other than Jordan Davis. I think also when you put that in with the wide nine, the wide nine is, is a very, I would say, a frustrating defense. Um, you know, we played it a little bit in high school, and um, all the defensive ends are outside of everything. So even if you put a tight end out there, uh, they got defensive ends that are going to be, um, you know, outside shoulder to tight end. That's a seven technique. So – you know, you got guys way outside. You got your defensive tackles that are in the middle. And, and basically what you're telling teams to do is there's no opportunity to outflank us. We're not, we will not be outflanked. You're not going to get the corner. So all your sledding is going to have to be in between these hashes. It's going to have to be in between the guards and tackles. And it's going to have to be a, a, a situation where you're going to, going to have to run the ball and be physical up the middle from your center position to the two guard position. And you're going to have to run double teams, run zone blocking uh, stretch is the thing that you can still run. But when you're running that stretch, you, you got to automatically be thinking about cutback lane. Like you said earlier, it's, it, you're not going to get outside of it. So I, I'm anxious to see that with uh, in terms of what they can do patience with the offensive line running those inside zone drills uh with, with the inner squad scrimmages I'm, I'm anxious to see that and plus we'll talk about this um you know Jacoby Brissett's going to get those snaps uh what is he going to be able to look like uh and when you and, and I tell you what Philadelphia has one of the better uh has one of the better secondaries in terms of some name brand recognition um what they like to do and, and Philadelphia has always been decent in the secondary They've always had some corners. They've always played well in there. And I think it's a good opportunity to see what kind of um, mindset Jacoby Brissett has. Is he going to be able to be patient? I'm looking forward to seven on seven to see whether or not he's going to be patient and, and take what the defense gives him. But at the same time, not afraid to take your shot plays when they're there. 
So, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see that. Um, looking forward to it. And these are the reasons why teams try to avoid, um, you know, preseason games because you can, it's more of a controlled environment. So we'll see how it turns out. But there are some definitely a, a lot of takeaways that you can have uh, from go, taking away from these games uh, after you, you work with the Eagles. For Jacoby Brissett, look, the time is now. And it's, it, it's a, it, he's got to perform for the time that he is this team's quarterback one. And we've said, you know, many times, he doesn't have to go out there and be Deshaun Watson. Nobody's asking him to do that. But look, guys are open. There's passing lanes. Plays have to be made. And, you know, as much as this Browns running game is good and it's talented, um, Jacoby Brissett's got to keep guys out of the box. And the only way to do that is to take what is there to be had. And he's going to have to do that. But Ethan Procise with his ascension now to be the starting center. And just real quick, Jordan Davis. Six foot six, 340 pounds, a four, seven, eight, 40 yard dash. And I, if you think that's impressive, I think more impressive that is six foot six, 340 pounds with a broad jump of over 10 feet. Are you kidding Ready? me? You're probably not going to get a better opportunity than uh, Jordan Davis here in a couple of practices for the Browns. We're going to flip it up here as we go into obviously here. Um, the Browns defense against the Eagles offense. I think one thing that's really, really going to be a, a nice thing to watch is the Browns D backs, as much as we love them, there's an interesting triumvirate of wide receivers here for the Eagles all bring something different. And for the Browns defensive backs, just keep stacking good days together. We're going to get to that. Your latest locked on Browns, Garrett Bush, Jeff Lloyd. Thanks for being along for the ride. As you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find people who you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with the, just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. It's time for the to see where the Browns defense is going to be against this Eagles offense. I mean, you got a, you got a quarterback with running ability. Obviously, Browns aren't going to be able to hit him. But, you know, it's something to think about. Of course, Ravens on the schedule twice. Um, that Eagles wide receiver room, man, it's it, it's got a nice dynamic to it and should be good tests for A.J. Green, Martin Emerson. And we'll see if Denzel Ward gets out there. It, well, you look at the, the, the Eagles when you talk about Jalen Rager, a speed guy. And then in the addition to A.J. Brown, you know, you, you bring him in Devontae um, Smith. Uh, high draft pick out of Alabama. All three of those guys, they they have what we call, um, I, I like to say that they have all three, uh, you know, archetypes in, as far as a receiver. They got the speed guy, the guy that can move around and, and, and you know, run the routes from the slot position. They got the big body physical guy in A.J. Brown that can go up and high point the football, very physical run after catch. And then you got Devontae Smith, who is a more of a route runner. He's more of a fluent guy, a guy that could do all all around, just good uh, receiver, young, um, good speed. So they got a lot of what you need in, in a, in a uh, receiver room in order to, to to have a great offense. And But that that doesn't just matter on its own. Um, I think they, you know, look at the running back rooms. They got some decent running backs, too, um, backs that have been over 1,000 yards the last couple of years. And, um, you know, those two things really combine uh, to go in to help Jalen Hurts and, and become who he is. Now, here's the crazy thing about Jalen Hurts, Jeff. When he came out and he transferred from Alabama to Oklahoma, I just – I thought he had no ability – I, I, I would have not said that he was going to be a, a – um, second round pick. I didn't think he was going to be um, this successful in terms of him just being a drop back quarterback or a quarterback that, that was able to complete passes in the league. I thought he was more of a, uh, you know, I didn't know if he was going to be a, a late round pick, maybe a dude that you get some development with, 
uh, you know, try to try to see what you got. Maybe you can run him in on some gadget plays. But I didn't see the skill set. Uh, but once he got to Oklahoma and he got with Lincoln Riley, everything kind of took off for him. He started throwing the ball more. Um, he he showed that he had a decent enough arm. And then really what he showed was he just had the intangibles. People loved him. People, uh, you know, he went in and sold the locker room immediately. And then he became a guy that was seen as a dude who potentially is a starter in this league. And he got his opportunity when Carson Wentz was playing horrible. And he came in and gave him a spark. So now, you know, he has everything you need. Um, they've worked on his uh, his uh, offense. They've worked on the roster. They got receivers. They got some backs. Now you, you're looking at good tight end. Now you're looking at whether or not you can really evaluate Jalen Hurts because here's the crazy part about it. They got another top flight pick this year. So even if, if Jalen Hurts doesn't do well this year, uh, they'll still have the opportunity to, t- to possibly take another quarterback kind of high next year. So we'll, we'll, it'll be interesting to see it's a make or break year for Jalen Hurts, but uh, he he can do a lot of things. He can skin plays, he can run. And uh, those are all different things that uh, are, are going to uh, get a Browns a, a, a little bit of uh, some concern. And on top of that, you can, you can practice your rush lane assignments now, staying in your gap, making sure you have a consistent rush, not going all over the place. You can't dip inside when you got contain on plays and, and gap assignments and, and gap rush is going to be huge for that. So those are the things that I, I really think about when you talk about offense versus defense, Eagles, Browns. I think, you know, you hit on a couple of good points here. Obviously, you know, when Jalen Hurts was at Alabama, they were just trying to transcend into more of a passing game. And when they got to that point, and that's kind of when they basically pushed Jalen Hurts out and gave the ball to two with Zach Ebola. He went to Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley's like, look, we're going to throw it 40 times a game. So if you make a mistake, it don't matter because you got 37, you got 38, you got 39 more opportunities to toss the pill. So don't be afraid about making a mistake. And I think the thing with Jalen Hurts, and look, if you're going to talk pure passers in the league, he's not going to be one of the top names mentioned, probably not even one of the top half names mentioned. But when you have a player who has the ability to use his feet to either A, create, you know, open more, you know, more open passing lanes or his legs to just create yards. And there were games last year where his legs carried him and carried the Eagles offense. It covers up for the fact that he is not an elite passer as far as, you know, his touch, um, you know, you know, his overall, you know, handling of throwing to, you know, every route in the, you know, the tree, so to speak. Um, I do think it was a good point you made about as far as, you know, practicing your discipline. And this is a team that does have to face Lamar Jackson twice a year. There are going to be other mobile quarterbacks this team faces this year. And, you know, for Miles Garrett, for J.D. Van Clowney, it's not trying to get a successful pass rush, but also not opening the lane where basically the quarterback just went out the door that you vacated. Um, so discipline to, in those regards. I really, really love the work the Browns DB should be able to get in this week. You talk about AJ Green, six foot three. They say two twenty. He's probably bigger than that. Um, for you know younger guys like Martin Emerson and obviously AJ Green, um, they're considered bigger corners. Well, now you're up against it because you're going against a guy that ain't none of you as big as in AJ Brown. He's literally built like a you know built like a tight end. Some of the Browns have some familiarity with uh, A.J. Brown you know, with his days with the Titans, but now here with the Eagles. Devontae Smith, now this is going to be one where are you absorbing technique? Are you doing what you were taught? Because he's an outstanding, an outstanding route runner. No missteps. So is your footwork in check? Are you ready to go? Because Devontae Smith, he is one that can you know turn you into a gift real quick because uh, he can drop you right on your can the way he can run a route. Jalen Rager, straight speed. Um, So, you know, the diversity of this wide receiver room uh, should allow for some really, really good reps for these Browns DBs who just need to continue stacking together good days Um, because the bar set high for what this secondary can be for the Cleveland Browns. There is no doubt about it. This is a legit group with a ton, a ton of talent. And for this secondary to not be top five, top four, top three, anything less than that is probably going to be unacceptable for Joe Woods um, because there's just too much talent and there's just way too much invested you know, into that room. So, you know, with this, you're going to go against a mobile quarterback. 
in Jalen Hurts. So there's a lot there that can be done. Of course, you can't touch him. Um, and please don't touch him because that's going to lead to the fisticuffs and everything else that's going on, which we ain't want none of that. want to make sure we walk in there with 85 guys and we walk out of there with 85 guys. And, and of course, the Eagles wide receiver core brings a, a great, great diversity, which should allow for some really, really solid work for this Browns secondary, Garrett. Yeah, I think you bring up a really good point. No, no fights, man. No fights. Um, make make sure that you, you guys are pulling up on the quarterbacks. Make sure nobody gets injured because if, if you run up and you run through somebody, you hit them running back. Uh, you hold them up and you hit them. Uh, if you're talking trash out there as a defensive back and you're grabbing and holding and doing all that other stuff, listen. Don't come in and work your technique, man. That's the thing. It, it, it always that always upset me a little bit. Don't. Don't come in here and try to, t- t- you know, this ain't MMA. Come in, <laughs> come in, work your technique. That doesn't make you a tough guy. You're not going to make the ball team by saying, I-, I karate kicked somebody in the helmet. That ain't what we're looking for. We're not looking for WWE superstars. We're looking for guys that are going to come in here, work their technique, get some good work in, and, and-, and get to, you know, the next week. It's all about putting some stuff on tape. And, and getting better. That's how you do it. And that's that's the speech I'm telling my guys. Hey, don't come out here playing around. Don't come out here, button it up. Let's be ready to go. And let's go out here and, and work what we've been working on for the last few weeks and in, in the months in the OTA program. And let's get some good um, competition going back and forth. But save the tough guy act. It's actually funny. It's, it reminds me of a story when I talked with uh, Eric Metcalf a few years ago. Eric Metcalf chose to run track at Texas because he wanted no part of spring ball because his theory was <laughs> last thing I need is some third string linebacker trying to make a name for himself by lighting me up in the middle of April. Now be smart, Thanks. be disciplined. And you saw yesterday with the Panthers and the Patriots, you know, Christian McCaffrey went to the ground a couple of times. You, you can't, that is not the purpose of this. And look, you ain't going to make a team over it. And if somebody has got to step in and have an opportunity that where they might get punched in the face due to your actions, guess what? You ain't making no friends in the locker room either. We haven't, spoken much about this and for me i kind of almost don't want to bring it up because it's been going so well but the rookie kicker and of course we're going to talk a little special teams here uh as we are you know trying to figure out what will be the role that your green grant was supposed to have to do and mr kate york has had a solid solid debut and you know we talked about this many times maybe he was a little bit higher price than either garrett or i were comfortable with for paying for a kicker but it better pay the dividends so far so good. Your latest locked on Browns, Jeff Lloyd and Garrett Bush. <clears throat> You're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many. As the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby. You can make it home okay. It's no big deal. What are the odds you'll get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You total your car. You kill someone. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. Welcome back to the Locked On Brown Podcast. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when we're coming on. Um, we are working on a little format. As you know, you may have saw, we did, uh, we've did. we been posting uh, yesterday a little bit earlier, right? Um, during the day, wherever you are, you digesting this information. I, I think me and Jeff, um, you know, we're trying to get the information out to you guys quicker, and it'll definitely help. Um, because it'll give you a little more time and maybe you have a break at lunchtime. Maybe you have a little break after you move your kids around and, and you have a little bit of time t- to check out the podcast. So, right. So we decided to upload a little earlier. And so we, we hope this works out for you guys. Let us know how you like it. Um, if you guys like it and love it, we'll, we'll continue to uh, upload and give you some more time to watch it throughout the day. We th- we looked at the feedback and, and thought it was pretty good feedback from the last show, which we uploaded a little earlier. So we'll continue. Like we said, hey, this is your show. This is your podcast, man. This is about your team. So we we take all things into consideration, and that's how we want to move um, in, in terms of what content we put out. So thanks for everybody, and, and definitely salute to you guys who've already done so and continue to, to listen.
Uh, Jeff, we talked about, you know, a little bit about everything offense, defense, but now let's get to the special teams. Uh, Kate York has been, I've been at practice. And one of the things that I've been noticing, because the, the, you, when you're at practice, uh, the uh, specialists are all, all right, basically in front of us, right? There's their little section in, in where they set up is right in front of Radio Row out there at the, um, um, over in Bria. So I have an opportunity to see him all the time when I'm there. This has been, he's been, uh, you know, money in terms of his field goals. Didn't, min- didn't miss any in the game. And I think this is going to be another good opportunity to get another group of people who are, cu- ch- hey, they're trying to block this. <laughs> hey, guys, they're going to block this, stay off the center or the long snapper, and, and, but they're going to come after this, and it's going to give you a good opportunity to get a feel that rush, to feel that pressure, and to and to go out there and get to compete a little bit against somebody else. Um, so I'm excited to see what he can do. And I'll tell you what, people, you know, people talk about kickers or whatever the case, nobody – Nobody wants to talk about kickers until the kicker loses you a game. And then all of a sudden it's important. Then it's all of a sudden you want to, well, wait, can we look at this or what can we do? And then you want to talk about, well, what can we find a person? Listen, that's why you invest picks in, in kick to kickers because they actually matter, especially now that field goals are 35 yards for extra points. Yeah. Look how many people have lost games because of that. And I'm definitely – uh, interested in seeing what Kate York is going to do in practice. The kicker position runs one of two ways in the NFL. You either have a kicker, your fans love him, everybody knows his name, or it's that damn kicker. And, you know, <laughs> miss the extra point. Kick the kickoff out of bounds, those types of things. And guess what? It's a revolving door. We've seen some teams with several as, what, two, three, four kickers in one season. We've certainly been through this with the Browns. Um, oh, well, he's not doing that bad. It's 22 with 29. And then you go in, we face the Ravens. Oh, here's Justin Tucker, who's 24 of 25 this season. 15 field goals outside of 45 yards. Um, the It's treating like the Browns probably, you know, this turned into be a very, very solid pick for them. Uh, again, you know, using an early fourth round pick on a kicker, I think it was like 113, something like that. Again, it's not something, you know, I would normally in any way do. But the Browns identified a big hole on this roster and said, look, I'm done thinking about it. I'm done worrying about it. I don't care if I'm overpaying. This is something that hopefully if it works right, we're not worrying about the kicker position for another damn decade. So KDR to this point, and I don't want to go too much into this because kickers, it's a tricky, tricky thing. You don't ever want to uh, obviously spend too much time talking about it because, you know, you have the fear that maybe then ends up becoming a problem. Barack was what we saw in the first game, a monster leg. Um, and the big trend here, obviously, you know, lately over the last few years in the NFL, and it started with Bill Belichick, like a lot of things do start with Bill Belichick, is having that lefty punter. The spin is just different. Uh, you know, as it's, you know, once it takes its flight, hits its arc and starts to come down, it almost kind of gets like a tail to it, like a slider in baseball. Just more and more difficult to track, more and more difficult to follow. So that looks good. The key, though, is, is you know, how are these special teams going to start to develop here? This is another move where the Browns said, we're going to put some money to it. We're going to put you know, some capital to this. We are going to have this handled and not worried about it anymore. And sadly for Jakeem Grant's season is already over for him. So we are back to basically the Dimitri Feltons of the world. And Donovan Peoples-Jones, I love you as a wide receiver. I'm not a fan as a punt returner. Um, don't want to be going down this road anymore. So is somebody going to solidify themselves? And, you know, uh, the, the receiver they brought in the other day, Easton, whatever, um, you know, I don't think he's got, you know, he has returnability, but I don't understand a role where he's going to make this roster. So I don't know necessarily he's going to be that guy. Um, this could be something that Browns address, you know, Labor Day weekend that you will find cut down weekend. The Browns would maybe look for a returner there. Um, but that's, you know, special teams wise for York Barraquez, just keep the road going that you are. Um, as far as coverage units, there's been times where you know, the Browns have been really, really good. I think they got the makings of a, some good coverage units because you think about players like Martin Emerson, A.J. Green. You guys are also going to be core special teamers. You're the fourth, fifth, sixth cornerback. You're getting a lot of special teams reps. So if these guys are turning you know, their reps you know, on the defensive side of the ball to this level of quality, you got to think that will translate to the special teams. But, Garrett, yeah, we're going to have to figure something out here in the return game because, you know, I mean, taking a knee on every kickoff, fair catch in every punt, uh, we've been there. We've done that. If you can get something, some sort of juice out of some type of return, man, it would just be another thing this team could use while the fact that they are, you know, running their offense with a second string quarterback. Eight, eight, eight to 10 yards on special teams, it, it makes all the difference. 
if you can get somebody back there that can consistently get that ball out um, at least to the 30-yard line, um, you, you're gaining 34, 35-yard line. You're gaining seven, eight yards. Your team starts earlier in, in, down the field in better field position, especially on punts. You know, fair catching every single punt. Can you imagine the difference between that and eight to 10 yards, eight to 12 yards? We'll take those eight to 12. You catch the ball on a 30, you give them 12 yards, you're now on a 42. You give your team a, a shorter uh, shorter way to go to get into scoring position. And, and a lot of people don't recognize it, but those things are important. The special teams, kicking the ball out of the end zone, not giving up returns. Are, is, is your punter, um, you know, you know, is he is he able to pin teams down deep, right? All those things go into uh, all those things go into consideration on the special teams, uh, and, and so I'm I'm waiting for the Cleveland Browns to get back to the level of where they had one of the best special teams in the game, where you had a kick returner and Josh Cribbs that was was a guy that could give you a, a seven and put you on the board in in, in the snap of a finger. And you got one of the best punters, Dave Zastadil, <laughs> got the OU grad. Well, you know, shout out to Dave Zastadil. Um, definitely played with him in college. And you, you had everyone's, uh, you know, maestro, everyone's Zen master, Phil Dawson, who was kicking 40, 50 yarders in snow. And he just did it. Uh, we call him the weatherman. He knows where the wind is. He knows where, where the field is at. He knows where everything is at. So we want to get back to that. Not saying we might get there, but that, that's where we were looking to trend. When you're going to be down your quarterback for as long as the Browns are, everybody else is everybody, – every other unit, everybody else on that team has got to pick it up a notch. Um, and special teams, with what the Browns invested into it, and I understand, you know, Jakeem Grant has been lost for the season – but the Browns put a lot of investment in this. You need to see the returns here. Um, there's no question about it. This can't be a dog unit like it was last year. You need consistency in the kicking game, consistency in the punting game, and hopefully something out of your return game. He is Garrett Bush, one of the hosts of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, 11 to 1, Monday through Friday on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed. Notifications on. The guys just continue to put out great quality content day in, day out. Um, that's the only pick up here with the Guardians, obviously, where they are right now. Um, of course, you know, Brown season, you know, pretty much in full, you know, full season mode here. So, ton of stuff you can check out every day at the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. The Barbershop, Saturday mornings on 92.3 The Fan. Other opportunities to catch Bar uh, Garrett over there at the barbershop as well. Make sure you're following at GBush91. Jeff Lloyd, your host here at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. The uh, show link at Lockdown Brown. Follow back account, as everybody knows. Whether it is on uh, your favorite uh, podcast channel, make sure you're following, subscribe to Lockdown Browns. And of course, now on YouTube, subscribe, notifications on. The growth has been great over the last, I would say, about 72, 96 hours as we're in the game action. Um, as Garrett mentioned, the shows are going to come at you a little bit earlier in the day now. Um, and especially just yesterday was the first test run. Uh, the you know response, the listens were off the charts. This is a goal we always meant to get to. But at the end of the day, Garrett and I do have personal lives and we have other commitments we have to get to. This was ultimately the way we wanted it to get this show going. And now it looks like our schedule is going to you know, cross here. So we can uh, get you that content earlier each and every day. So make sure you're checking it out. Of course, you know, obviously leave those reviews and, you know, all the five stars, all that good stuff. We appreciate it. Uh, got to a ton here today. What we're looking for for from the Cleveland Browns, Thursday's, Friday's practices, obviously the offense, obviously the defense, and the special teams, which, I, you know, hasn't been talked about enough, but needs to be a solid, solid unit here while the team deals with the absence of Deshaun Watson. All that being said, this has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB on the LOB. Let's go Browns.